The Dot Product, Level 1. In this video, we will define a new vector operation called the dot product, also known as the scalar product, and sometimes referred to as the inner product. Defining vector multiplication is pretty tricky because vectors are not ordinary numbers, so ordinary multiplication is not directly applicable to vectors. Vectors have direction as well as magnitude. They cannot be multiplied in the same way that scalars are. Instead, we must define what the operation of vector multiplication means. Among the many possible ways to define how to multiply vectors, there are three ways that is most commonly used in math and physics. These include multiplication of a vector by a scalar, which was already discussed in the previous videos, multiplication of one vector by a second vector, so as to produce a scalar, and multiplication of one vector by a second vector so as to produce another vector. In the following series of videos, we will focus on the second type, known as the dot product, because a dot is used to indicate multiplication. In these videos, I will be using the dot product and scalar product interchangeably. The most common use of the dot product in applications in physics and engineering is to decompose vectors into their components parallel and perpendicular to a given vector. Let's first go over a visual demonstration of how the dot product is defined geometrically. In the previous videos, we described scalar multiplication as an operation that takes a real number called a scalar and changes the length or magnitude of a vector. If this scalar was negative, then it would also change the direction of the vector 180 degrees and would point in the opposite direction. This operation can be denoted as c times vector v. Now, the scalar product is different because it involves multiplication of two vectors as opposed to multiplication of a scalar and a vector. So keep this little detail in mind. The next difference between scalar multiplication and the scalar product is that scalar multiplication produces a vector, and the scalar product produces a scalar, not a vector. To define the scalar product, we will start with two planar vectors, a and b, with known magnitudes, and place them tail to tail, as follows, where the angle theta between the vectors can range anywhere from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. Let's take a look at the first case when the angle between vector A and vector B is equal to 0 degrees. In other words, they are parallel. Under this condition, the product of two vectors behaves similar to the way we multiply real numbers. For example, if vector A has a length or magnitude of 10 and vector B has a magnitude of 4, then the scalar product pronounced as A dot B would be equal to 10 times 4, which simplifies to 40. Now, the only reason why we were able to multiply the magnitudes was because both vectors were pointing in the same direction, so their magnitudes multiply like real numbers. Unfortunately, vectors are rarely lined up and point in the same direction. So, now we need the scalar product to account for potential differences in direction. Let's take a look at a different case. What if the angle between these same vectors was an acute angle? Now how do we define the scalar product? Well, when the vectors lined up in the case when the angle was 0 degrees, all we had to do was to multiply the magnitudes. So we essentially need to do the same for this case. The only problem is that vector b is not pointing in the same direction as vector a. But, relative to an xy coordinate plane, the x component of vector b does just that and points in the same direction or along the path of vector a. This is nothing more than the projection of vector b in the direction of a. In other words, sum of vector b is projected onto vector a. We now have a way to take the direction of the vectors into account. In this sense, the dot product represents the product of the magnitude of one vector and the magnitude of the other vector along the direction of the first vector. 
Using right triangle trigonometry, we can easily find the projection of vector b onto vector a by computing the x component of vector b. In this case, it will be equal to the magnitude of vector b times cosine of theta. This expression represents the component of vector b along the direction of vector a. We now have a vector that points along the path of vector a. So we take this value and multiply it by the magnitude of vector a to find the value of the scalar product. Once again, notice that we end up with a numerical value, a scalar, and not a vector. This is really important. The scalar product produces a scalar, not a vector. Now, what if we wanted to do the opposite and find the projection of vector a in the direction of vector b? Well, it turns out that we can take components along any direction that's convenient, not just the x and y axis. So we go ahead and draw a line that points in the direction of vector b and draw a line perpendicular to this line that stops at the tip of vector a. Once again, we can use right triangle trigonometry to find the projection of vector a along the direction of vector b. In this case, it will be equal to the magnitude of vector a times cosine of theta. Now that we have a vector that points in the direction of vector b, it is just a matter of multiplying this expression by the magnitude of vector b. Notice that in both cases, the final expression is the same. As an example, let's find a dot product between vector a and vector b when theta equals 60 degrees. Using the geometric interpretation of the dot product, we go ahead and multiply the magnitudes together, obtaining 40, and then multiply by cosine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 1 half. Simplifying the expression, we obtain 20 as our final answer. Notice that the dot product was reduced in half when compared to the first case when both vectors pointed in the same direction, where theta equaled 0 degrees. This occurred because the projection of one vector in the direction of the other vector was reduced. Even though both vectors had the same magnitude, the direction changed the value of the final answer. This tells us that the dot product is essentially multiplication taking direction into account. Now let's take a look at the case when theta equals 90 degrees, or pi over 2. Under this condition, neither of the vectors has a projection in the direction of the other vector. So we are essentially multiplying the magnitude of one vector times zero, which simplifies to zero. This result tells us that the scalar product of two perpendicular vectors, or orthogonal vectors, is always equal to zero. In some textbooks, the words perpendicular, orthogonal, and normal all mean essentially the same thing, in this case, meeting at right angles. However, it is common to say that two vectors are orthogonal. Two lines or planes are perpendicular, and a vector is said to be normal to a given line or plane. So two vectors, A and B, are orthogonal if the dot product is equal to zero. From this definition, it follows that the zero vector is orthogonal to every vector v, because zero dot v equals zero. Moreover, for any angle theta between zero and pi, cosine of theta equals zero if and only if theta equals pi over two. So two non-zero vectors are orthogonal if and only if the angle between them is pi over two. This fact will play a crucial role in later topics in this course. Now, what happens when the angle between the vectors is obtuse? In this case, the geometric interpretation is the same. We still want to find the projection of one vector in the direction of the other vector and multiply it by the magnitude of the second vector. In this case, sum of vector b is projected onto the negative of vector a. Also, the product between the magnitudes will be the same, since magnitudes are always positive. But the angle is obtuse, meaning that cosine of theta will be negative. For example, if theta equals 120 degrees, a dot b will be equal to negative 20. Finally, if theta equals 180 degrees, then all vector b is projected onto the negative of vector a. In essence, both vectors are parallel in the opposite directions, 
or in this case, anti-parallel. This is very similar to the first case where both vectors were parallel and pointing in the same direction. In this case, the dot product will have the same value as case 1, but it will be negative. Alright, notice that the dot product is extremely useful if you are interested in finding out how much of one vector is projected onto the second vector, or how similar two vectors are in direction. Taking a look at all five cases, we see that if the magnitudes of two vectors are constant and do not change, the dot product will have a maximum value when theta equals 0 degrees, and will have a minimum value when theta equals pi. If theta is an angle between 0 and pi, then the dot product will have some fractional portion of the maximum value if theta is acute, and some fractional portion of the minimum value if theta is obtuse. In the special case when theta equals pi over 2, the dot product will be equal to 0, and the vectors will be orthogonal. Alright, in our next video, we will calculate the dot product by using the component definition.